We got this signal that Bitcoin was going to crash a couple of days ago, well before the dump we're seeing right now. How low will it go? And is this the end of the Bitcoin rally? I don't think so. Actually, there's a beautiful shining beacon of hope just where you're not looking for it. Let me try that again. Go. Try that again. Bitcoin's dropping again. If only I knew about it. I did. I actually have an alert I'm going to show you that literally told us that Bitcoin is going to dump days ago. It, it's amazing. No, let me try that again. Okay. Bitcoin is dumping again. Ah, if only I knew I would have protected profit in so many positions. Actually, I already knew it was going to dump like days ago. We have an alert that I'm going to show you that is fantastic. And it did an amazing job earlier back in March. And it's doing the same job right now. Here's exactly where I think Bitcoin's going to drop to. Plus the silver lining in this little bit of a dump we're seeing right now. All of this in today's video. What's up, guys? It's me, Aaron Dishner from The Better Traders, where I can teach anyone how to become a better trader. And in this video, we're going to be focusing specifically on Bitcoin's price action, what I think is happening, and where I think we could drop to, plus all of this talk about a pre-having pullback. Market psychology is a very powerful thing. I'll say that for sure. And that's what I think we're seeing unfold. But there are other alerts and other signals that are telling us, watch out. So first off, I want to show you what alert I'm talking about. And I'm going to go over to Discord to show that to you. Wrong button. Okay. All right. Yeah. These alerts, the stop loss hunting alert has been firing on Discord and also on TradingView from the indicator ever since the 29th. We've had about four days of these alerts going Ding, 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 ding. And most recently, yesterday, we had two of them in a row. Now, while these alerts are not 100% bulletproof, nothing is, but they have been incredibly accurate at predicting when the market's going to drop. If you paid attention, you've been watching my videos. About a month ago in March, we saw a dump on Bitcoin and the stop loss hunting alert told us that this was going to happen before the price of Bitcoin dropped. So what did I do when I first got these alerts? Well, the truth is that when I get these alerts, I don't react right away. First, I look at the charts. I look at what the TBO is telling me, and I try to make an unbiased and unfearful or unfear inspired uh, decision. So what I did was I took profit in several positions that were already in profit. I protected positions that were in profit with a stop loss in case the price goes down. I got stopped out in profit. And then if I have positions that are open and I have um, a desire to continue building in those positions, I'm just going to be adding more orders way down low. The, the beautiful thing about this indicator is that you can capitalize on these big pullbacks that Bitcoin has. So let me show you this on TradingView. So we're going to be talking about these four things. The stop loss hunting alert here on TradingView. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin cloud pierces rather with the TBO cloud pierces and this concept of the pre having pullback and the one bullish sign that I'm seeing all over the place to be honest but specifically on Bitcoin so here on the daily time frame we can see that Bitcoin has in fact fallen back into the TBO cloud this is a TBO cloud pierce and this is a sign of weakness note we already had this sign of weakness actually all the way back here March 16th so when we get these pierces, the first one is going to be a sign that there's going to be more downward price action to continue. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now. We saw a move above, which is great. And getting out of this cloud is a really bullish sign, but it's not enough to keep us from falling again. As soon as we started staying in this box range, I was notifying our members in the private Discord server that this looks toppy. This does not look good. I'm seeing volume dropping. I'm seeing price stalling. These are, well, this is the recipe for further downside continuation, for weakness for the chart for Bitcoin. And that's exactly what we're seeing happening right now today. So let's go to the 30 minute time frame because I want to show you the indicator that I was just talking about. So right here, this red, well, red blob, I guess this red column here, it's been firing ever since Friday. So it's been firing for the last three days. 
When we get this thing repeatedly going over and over and over and over like this, it's an alarm bell. So let's look back at the chart. So we first got this alert when Bitcoin was here, had a little bit of a pullback in this area at 69K. The price actually went up a little bit higher. These are the moments where I start to go, oh man, that probably wasn't the best idea to, to close out of posi some positions. Because when I took profits on lots of those positions, seeing Bitcoin move up a little bit makes you feel a little bit oh, like, oh man, that probably was a false alarm. Nope, that was the right decision. <laughs> Um, not only did I save my account 5% for Bitcoin, we know for a fact that altcoins like Ethereum, Cardano, BNB, all these other tokens are going to be dropping to a multiple degree, a multiple factor of whatever Bitcoin does. This is the nature of cryptocurrency. So that's why this alert is so simple and so powerful. When we get this alert telling us that there could be unexpected volatility over the next 24 to 48 hours, man, oh man, was this spot on. Now, I want to actually go back in reverse before I talk about some targets to show you where this also triggered. Note that we get this sometimes on an uptrend, but look what happens on this uptrend. So we get this firing back here early March. The price goes up about 11% and then ugh, falls. Amazing. It's amazing because the TBT stop loss hunting alert notified us that there will most likely be, and I'm being careful with the words because it's not 100% it's going to happen. But you have to admit, this is crazy. Seeing the alert, the price goes up, and then it has a massive dump basically below where the alert triggered. Now, of course, we know it rallied up higher and higher and higher. This alert is not letting us know that the market is falling at all. This alert is letting us know that there's going to be short-term volatility more than usual for Bitcoin. Sometimes nothing happens. So fair enough, right here, we had this alert going for rather several alerts going between the 24th, I'm sorry, the, the 8th of March and the 11th of March, nothing really happened. I mean, there's a little bit of a, a pump and a dump right there, but nothing massive. But when we got this alert back here on the 14th of March, when Bitcoin is at 73K, this dropped, well, Bitcoin dropped 17%. And we, we continued to get these alerts, ding, 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 letting us know. And then finally we had a break, which is nice. And then it's been going solid ever since Friday the 29th. So how do I handle this when I get this alert? Well, the reality is that when this alert happens, sometimes I'm asleep, so I have to be notified on Discord or on trading view. But when it happens, like I said before, I'm going to be looking at my open positions and deciding, do I want to take profit here? And if I don't want to take profit, then I want to let the rest ride. Or maybe I might take partial profit. I might not sell everything, but I'll sell a good chunk of my position. But I'm going to protect positions in profit with a stop loss. That is the whole concept of stop loss. Stop loss isn't necessarily always used to close on a loss. Maybe you're in a massive win, right? Maybe you're in like 100%, 200% profit, but a pullback like this for Bitcoin of 5% might mean a 15 to 20% pullback, depending on the market cap of the coin of choice that you're looking at. So understand that while this pullback on Bitcoin might not be epic, it might not be like, oof, like shattering it will shatter a lot of charts. And we're going to see that in a second. So the way that I handle this alert is I don't panic. I look at the charts. I make decisions on where I want to take profits. And most of the time it's partial profits or I'll protect positions that are already in profit. So where could Bitcoin fall to? Again, going back to trying to keep myself on track here. So we talked about cloud pierces. We talked about the TBT stop loss hunting alert a little bit out of order. And then we're going to talk about the pre-having pullback concept. So where could this pull back to? I've seen a lot of talk on crypto Twitter and also videos popping up and just checking out the thumbnails or the titles that a lot of people are entertaining the idea that there could be a pre-halving pullback. Now, the halving is scheduled for April 19th, last time I checked. So it means that we still have about 17 days, a little bit more than two weeks left until the halving. Many people are expecting a pullback before the halving. Uh, I think that makes sense just because it, if everyone is expecting it to happen, it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, you'd be surprised. Now, where could Bitcoin fall to? Well, the truth is that we have short-term support right here. So if I zoom in on the chart so you can see a little bit better, 
we have this lower wick um, and then we have another wick right here. So we got on the 5th of March and then on the 20th of March. So this level at about 62K ish, this seems like a logical level for the price of Bitcoin to drop. The nice thing about this level, I will say, is that if we don't pierce below, which is, I think, is going to be the likely case, we're not going to pierce below. But the nice thing about this level right here is that it makes a higher low. It's actually a really good sign. Um, we're basically creating a wedge, a very, very, very slow motion wedge. So we have this right here. What would be great is to see the price of Bitcoin kind of struggle, fall down, bounce here, and then maybe do another test or a little bounce like this make a higher high, and then kind of go up. So I'm actually expecting, and let me turn off this price label, I'm actually expecting something like this, where we'll see a drop, maybe we'll see a recovery bounce a little bit the next day tomorrow, and then we'll see another drop down here to support around 62K. We struggle, and then when we get closer to the halving, probably a week away, I'm expecting that we're going to see a recovery move to the upside. It just makes sense to me, mainly because of market psychology. Everyone's expecting a dump before the halving. The price falls another, what, 5%? Let me just double check first. Another 7% or so from our current level. That would be considered a pullback, enough of a pullback, in that once we have that drop to 62-ish K, then we should probably see the price increase moving up off of this support level and then coming up here to resistance, which amazingly the TBO has plotted pretty well. It's accurate uh, right here at 70K. I told, by the way, everyone in the Better Traders members, the membership discord, uh, that this level, Bitcoin really, in order for me to really be strong bullish on it, not only did it have to hold above this level, but it needed to really surpass the previous high. It didn't. When we had this level of resistance right here and it's flip-flopping right on it, that's a sign of weakness. It's not strength at all. Yesterday, we saw a wick down at the fast line. Not bad, but now that we've pierced yet again, we're probably going to continue moving sideways for this week. So my short-term target for Bitcoin to fall is down here at 62K. Now, if things get worse, which I don't expect them to get worse, to be 100% honest, um, but we do have, actually, let me put both these back up so you can see. We do have another complementary level of support right here at the 1.618, which is the 2018 Fibonacci extension level. Uh, I talk about this a lot in the Smarter Trader course that we have on the bettertraders.com. There are also resources that you can learn about um, online, of course, for free. But just understand that this is a significant level of support slash resistance, which is why the price stalled here, but it bounced. We saw another wick into this level, but it didn't go down from that level. Um, here we have another bounce to this level, and we spring springed off it, sprung off it to this other fib level. So we can use these for support and resistance levels. We can see the price bouncing between them. So if we don't see this level respected, the next level I'm looking at support would be here basically at 61,300 or so. I think that makes a lot of sense and it would be logical to see that. However, because I don't think we're going to be making a newer low, which would be bad, by the way, um, I think that we're probably going to see 62K, that'll be the next bottom of this pullback, which would be a very minor pullback of only 13%. And then we kind of do this a little bit until our halving event, move up a little bit, and then we test this and we'll probably, let me actually go back um, to this drawing right here. So again, I, I'm expecting something like this where we come down, we bounce a little bit, and then we kind of get excited for this, the halving, break above, hit the halving, we probably might actually stop right there. To be honest, we probably won't surpass 74K, but maybe we will. But I'm not expecting that we will. Um, and then after the halving, you're not going to like this, but I actually think we're going to go back down. We're going to continue chopping sideways for a while. Uh, we just moved up too fast, too high. Um, and it doesn't make sense to see Bitcoin rallying up a lot higher. So what is the one bullish sign that I see right now for Bitcoin? Well, the one bullish sign I see is actually staring at you in the face. It's really obvious where it is if you know what to look at. So here with the TBO on the daily time frame, 
we have lots of different symbols, lots of different elements that make up the trending breakout indicator. All of this stuff that's on the chart, not the candles, but the indicator. The one thing that I keep an eye on to gauge the strength of a trend is going to be the slow line right here. The slow line is dubbed the slow line because it is the slowest moving average that makes up the TBO indicator, the trending breakout. Because this is angling upward and it's not showing any signs of flattening, let me just zoom in like this, you can see it's still pointing up, which is great. Even though Bitcoin has already gone inside the cloud once, there's some consolidation that's happening there, it's bounced up, now it's going back inside again, we might see another drop. This isn't flattening, it's a great sign. This means to me that I don't think that if we're going to see a lower low. I, that's why I think that we're going to see a drop maybe to 61K or so or 62K, like I said, and then we bounce up higher and we continue because we have to focus on the long term trajectory of Bitcoin, which is up. We can go to the weekly time frame and see the same thing. So right here on the weekly time frame, we can see that the slow line is also angling up really, really, really strong. Now, worst case scenario, we have not touched the TBO fast line, this green line, ever since the 16th, or rather the week of the 16th of October, 2023. It's been a long time. That level is currently at 53K. That would be a catastrophic drop for Bitcoin, given the bullish trajectory that we've seen. Again, I'm not expecting that to happen. I'm really not. I just think we're going to be seeing some sideways chop for quite a while. And again, it's hard to go against the trend. When I see the slow line starting to angle up like this, when we have TBO breakouts, these white dots telling us that there should be explosive price action to the upside, which, by the way, did an incredible job of letting us know. But this is only the start. I still think that we are just getting started with Bitcoin's ascent to higher highs, to 100K and even 100K and beyond. So at oh, a little bit earlier in the video, I talked about this idea of this multiple factor. When Bitcoin has a pullback of 5%, it's not unusual to see other coins pull back 8, 10, 15, 25%, even on a little minor pullback for Bitcoin. Why? Well, when the market cap is a lot smaller for these tokens that are further down the market cap top 100 list, we're going to see a lot more volatility, which can actually be a really good thing. And don't be surprised that some tokens are just pumping like crazy right now. Uh, and that's also super duper normal for crypto. Understand that just because Bitcoin is dumping doesn't mean that everything is going to be dumping to that multiple degree or factor. But the majority of tokens will be dropping and we're going to take a look at those right now. So if we go over here, I have a list that I update of the top market cap tokens. I'm actually going to go back to the daily time frame just to show a uh, comparative analysis. So right now today, Bitcoin has dropped about, well, right now it says about down 4%. This will change by the time this video is made public on YouTube because I'm filming it a lot earlier in the day, uh, Japan time. But if we go down the list, just visually, we can already see some of these charts perform better or worse. Ethereum is pretty much spot on with what's happening with Bitcoin, but we're seeing way more bearish signals for Ethereum. And by the way, I had a really nice long position open for Ethereum, but as soon as these blue dots right here and right here, these two guys, these are TBO close longs. When I see these on a daily time frame, I pay attention. Do you know why? Because if I see this, this means that, well, the trend, the bullish trend that we were in and we've been in ever since, I have to zoom out a lot, ever since back here when we got our open long on the 24th of October, if I haven't taken any profit yet, because I am 100% in profit from where I entered, I might want to consider taking some profit. No, we got some back here. Again, not a bad idea after 28%. If you didn't take profit yet, consider taking some profit because the trend might be weakening or changing. Same thing up here. So when I see these alerts, what I do is I don't panic and I don't sell down here. I wait for the price to retrace back up to the TBO fast line, which is what I did. So instead of me panicking and selling down here, I actually recovered about 13% before I took profits. So when I see this first one, I'm not messing around. I'm going to be taking some profits and reducing my size. And I'm going to be selling into stable. So that way, when the price falls again, I can buy back at a discount. That's the whole That's the whole way to do it. I have a video that's coming out really soon that's going to be going into detail on how to do this that I'm really excited to share with you. 
but it's, it's still being worked on. There will also be tokens that don't fall as much. Um, right now, Leo is not doing much of anything. Now, this is a, an unfair chart. If we go to Bitfinex, oh, it's still wicking a lot there. Uh, let me go to a different one, actually. Um, Maker is actually doing really well right now. Um, so far, it's just, it's actually up 0.75% today. It had a little bit of a move of 5%, but you can see it's not dumping. Core has been on an absolute tear. Yesterday, it closed 45% up with a breakout. The day before, 86%. The day before, 20%. The day before, 6%. There will be outliers, sure. But you can see already that there are many tokens, as Bitcoin is now down 4%, their tokens are going to be overreacting. Doge is down 8% today. Even yesterday, yesterday closed down 6.8%. Today is now 8%. Compare that to Bitcoin. Yesterday was only a 2% drop, yet Doge fell 6%. How is that possible? Because lower market cap tokens have a lower market cap, more market capitalization, not as much money in it, so that any volatile moves on Bitcoin, they're gonna re or they're gonna overreact to a multiple factor. So since Bitcoin has been dropping, Doge is down 14%. Um, we can see here Avalanche is also dropping quite a lot. It's over the last two days, it's down 11%. Shiba Inu, similar to Doge, is down 11%. So uh, Bitcoin Cash, okay, there's you're watching up to this point, which by the way, if you're watching up to this point, you haven't hit the like button. Thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, Click. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So I want to give you a little bit of a tip here. I actually shared this on the private server with people uh, in the Better Traders memberships a while back, and they actually caught it before I did. And this is an amazing signal. It's not the TBT stop loss hunting alert. It's not. But it's another signal, a confirmation signal that there's some weird volatility coming up with the price of Bitcoin. That alert not alert, but that condition is when Bitcoin Cash is pumping. For those of you that are new to cryptocurrency, there are many um, forked versions of Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Diamond, Bitcoin uh, Satoshi's Vision, BSV. There are lots of different forked versions of Bitcoin. They're not Bitcoin. They're not. Um, Bitcoin Cash is the only one with real utility, in my opinion. And there are some areas and vendors that use Bitcoin Cash as a means of settlement for payment. But to be honest, it just doesn't do anything other than that. Uh, it's not, in my opinion, superior to Bitcoin. And the price is very clear on that. If it were superior, it should be worth more than Bitcoin. Because it's only $600, it's less than, gosh, 1% of the price of Bitcoin right now. That's screaming, not Bitcoin. But when we see Bitcoin Cash pumping, that should be a little ding, 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 like warning bell, because this is a token with no utility other than for settling payments. And it's one of many. It's not even unique. It doesn't even have a unique ecosystem. I don't care what all of those BCH, like Bitcoin Cash fanatics have to say. When this is pumping, pay attention because there could be some upcoming volatility for the price of Bitcoin. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, look over here. We saw Bitcoin Cash pump in a day, 58%. March 2nd, what happened over here on March 2nd? Well, March 2nd, nothing happened for Bitcoin, not at all. A couple of days later, it moved up and then it dropped. So just pay attention. Not, I don't want to go into like too many conspiracy theories, but Bitcoin Cash is just like, it's a signal to me. If I see this pump in, I know that there's no real reason why it should be. It doesn't have any utility, doesn't have any real use case other than settling payments. It's not even that great, in my opinion. It's not. So the other one, and I love that I got some flack from someone on Twitter for this, uh, because Litecoin is actually worse than Bitcoin Cash. Litecoin has basically no utility other than to send payments, but it's even slower than Bitcoin Cash. The last time I used Litecoin to send crypto from point A to point B, it took over 30 minutes. It didn't cost that much, I guess, but compare it to XRP, compare it to Stellar Lumens, the XLM token, both of those are way cheaper and way faster. Stellar Lumens, XLM, actually can settle a transaction or transfer, excuse me, in a matter of 10, 15 seconds. 
is crazy fast, crazy fast. I don't know why anyone would want to use Litecoin. Even the originator of Litecoin admitted that he basically just copied Bitcoin, changed a couple of lines to make it cheaper to send transactions. That's it, did nothing. Charlie Lee, look it up. Look it up. Charlie Lee sold all of his Litecoin at the top of the 2017 uh, bull market. Sold it all. Because he recognized that there was mania, that his token was way overpriced. No one, no one cares about Litecoin. If you're listening to people talk about Litecoin that has utility, that has blah, 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 you need to walk away. Or just donate your money. It's a better option. You, you need to walk away. These tokens that are old, that have been around for a long time, just because it's been around for a long time does not mean it has merit, worth, value, a use case that's valid because so many new tokens are coming out that are going to replace the top 10 tokens that are there right now. Go ahead and look at historical top 10 market cap. Look at them. Every single year, we've seen different coins up in there. We saw Dash there. We saw Digibyte up there. We saw, I mean, there's so many tokens that, that have been in the top 10 and then just been pushed down the list. Why? Because crypto is ever evolving. It's ever changing. There are new tokens. There's new use cases. There are new applications. The market's um, interests shift and change. I'm going to stop there. It doesn't surprise me that Litecoin is dropping. So uh, I don't, I don't see any value in this token at all. Uh, it, it's dumb. So yesterday we saw it pump a little bit, about 15%. That to me again was like, uh, what's why is this pumping? It's pumping because it's being manipulated. That's the only reason why. Over here on the 29th, it popped 16%, which is crazy. Again, no use case. It's just an old token that exists and it happens to be in the top 100 market cap. It doesn't deserve to be there. Doesn't, doesn't do anything better than anything else in that list. It doesn't. So when you see Bitcoin Cash, when you see Litecoin pumping, be wary. That's a signal that things are going to be getting shaky, okay? Just, just look at the charts. Spend some time looking at, a, um, at the difference between Litecoin and Bitcoin. You can even go over here to compare um, you hit this button right here to compare or add symbols. So you can just add Bitcoin and then you can do a new price scale like this and you can just see what happens here with the price. When we see a pump, what happens to the price of Bitcoin soon after? You'll be amazed for Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. It, it's not a coincidence, okay? So if you want access to the, I have to find my windows. If you want access to the stop loss hunting alert, Simple alert that just lets you know when there could be upcoming volatility. If you want access to the private Discord server, you have to join the Better Traders membership. So head on over. The link is down below for the bettertraders.com and come over here and click on memberships. And then you can scroll down to see that there's actually a ton of stuff in the memberships. There's a ton like watch lists, trade setups, the TBOs included in some levels, breakout signals, close short signals from the TBO weekly market analysis, bonus videos, like there's a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff. The main thing to keep in mind is that mm, my sneaking suspicion is that Bitcoin is going to continue to drop down to 62K, $62,000. Now, whether or not we see a bounce and a move up higher because of this anticipation of the halving, I do think that's going to happen. And we finally hit the halving and then the price goes up and it's a little bit happy. I still think we're going to be going down. I don't think we're going to be shooting up past 73K for a while, but this is actually a really good sign for alts because the longer that Bitcoin stays sideways, actually, I'm not going to tell you the rest. You have to you have to tune into next week's video and I'm actually going to be switching to a live streaming format. So I will talk about this next week. So stay tuned for when that's going to be. And until the next time, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.